Blackburn Rovers return to Ewa Park with seven goals and six points for the past two games. Next up is Bristol Rovers at Ewa Park. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. Now, before I get stuck into this one, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Next up, Bristol Rovers. After the successful away trips to Bury and Oxford, where we snatched six points out of, out of six points out of six and scored seven goals. We are on a bit of a bit of a run at the moment, and hopefully we can take that forward into Ewa Park with uh, the visit of strugglers Bristol Rovers. Now let's take a look at the match in a little bit more detail. Uh, Rovers coming into this one Saturday, 25th of November. The match against Bristol Rovers last season. Uh, the uh, Bristol outfit finished 10th in League One, and their current current top scorer is Billy Bondin with nine goals. Um, he didn't feature in his last game, but I, I'm not sure if he's injured or or what. So I'm a little bit. Uh, Concerned about that, and they are managed by Daryl Clark. Now, the record for the two sides over the few years they played 35 times. In fact, Bristol Rovers come into this with more wins uh, ahead of Rovers um, over the past 35 fixtures between them. Obviously, Rovers are winning 13 of them, losing 15, and they've drawn seven between them. So, pretty close over the years. Let's take a look at some of the results. So, let's take a look at the last five results between the two sides. Last time out, they were Park. Way back in December 1991, Rovers picking up a 3-0 victory over Bristol. Uh, before that, they were held to a 2-2 draw, and that was also in 1991. And the last defeat was all the way back in 1980, when they lost 2-0 to Bristol Rovers. So let's take a look at the starting lineup. This is my prediction for Rovers. Not much, not many changes, to be honest with you. Why change a winning system? But anyway, David Ryer in goal, Naimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Whittingham is my only change, Bradley Dack, Marcus Antonson, and Joe Nuttall. I was pleased to see both Nuttall and Antonson continue their scoring run. And obviously the skipper with two goals against Oxford. That's also good to see. Bit of a commanding performance from Mulgrew. Also dictating who is going to take the penalty kicks. Uh, there's no question about it. Skipper's the man to do it with, as long as he's on the pitch. Uh, but yeah, good overall performance for Rovers. No uh, real concerns. Obviously, David Raya was a little bit sloppy with his distribution um, against Oxford. I'm not sure who was to blame for the two goals. Uh, maybe a bit of lack of concentration from the back four. But to be honest with you, I'm picking at holes. It was a great result. In my eyes, I was expecting a point against Oxford. But Bristol Rovers are a different outfit. They are struggling a little bit. And they want to come into this um, as underdogs, clearly. But uh, and, and we shouldn't underestimate them whatsoever. Um, um, Ewood has been a tricky venue for ourselves, let alone the opposition. So maybe, just maybe, we could take our away form into Ewood. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics. I've had to update these myself because Sky are a bit slow on the uptake. So Marcus Antonsen tops the goal scoring tally with seven goals. Uh, Dak Samuel still in there with five. And Joe Nuttall's also got five. Also down, further down there, uh, Charlie Mulgrew has also got five goals, but he couldn't, I couldn't squeeze him in there anyway. As for Yellows, no change there. Elliot Bennett, five. Evans, five. Smallwood, five. And Williams got three. As for the red cards, again, no change. Bennett, one. Samuel, one. And Scott Wharton got one in that checker trade cup. So as for the form book, this is our last five games, and we are unbeaten, if you consider that uh, checker trade uh, draw a, a draw and not a penalty defeat. So five unbeaten, well, at least five unbeaten. In fact, if you look all the way back, we're actually eight unbeaten. These are just the last five results. Obviously, two massive away victories have kept us right in the, in the thick of things in the playoff spots. But we want more than that. We're better than that. Uh, so we are looking up now towards those top two spots, which are currently uh, occupied by Shrewsbury and Wigan. How are the breaks off for Shrewsbury? Are they now going to start dropping like flies? Are uh, Wigan going to take advantage? Scunthorpe closing in on third spot. So it's getting a little tense, a little tense and tight at the top as we get into the real thick of the season so far with the, uh, the fast approaching Christmas fixtures where the games are just never ending. So I think end of end of December, start of January, we will take the, the, the league will take shape and maybe, just maybe, we'll be in those top two spots or within striking distance. As for our visitors, Bristol Rovers, this is how they will line up. Smith in goal, Ledbetter, Lockyer, uh, Broadbent, Brown, Sinclair, O'Clark, Lines, Saccombe, 
Harrison and I've gone for Bowden up front. I'm not sure why he didn't start that start the last game. Maybe he had an injury or something. But if he does start, we've got to be on our toes. That guy's got nine for the season, despite their precarious position in 17th spot. So we've got to uh, keep our wits about us. Uh, Downing and Mulgrew may have had a, uh, a good couple of games, but uh, leaking two goals against Oxford uh, does end that clean sheet run. As for the statistics for these guys, Bowden does top the, top the pops with nine goals. Gaffney's in there with six. Harrison's got six. Sokoma's got five. As for discipline, Clark's got five yellows. Harrison, four. Sokoma's three. And Lyons has got three. As for the Reds, they've got three guys on red cards. Just like us, Slocum, Lokia, and Sweeney all got a red. Into the form book for Bristol Rovers. Well, well, well. Where do we begin here? Uh, they are winless. Winless in five games, at least five games, and they even lost to a under-21 uh, outfit in West Ham United in that Checker Trade Cup. But they lost to AFC Wimbledon at home. They lost away to Scunthorpe. They lost at home to Swindon Town in the Checker Trade Cup. They also lost to Notts County away in the FA Cup, and they also lost to West Ham United under 21 in the Checker Trade Cup. So. Um, Pretty rotten bit of form for Bristol Rovers. So they want to turn a corner. They're sticking with Daryl Clark at the moment. So what's it going to be? What's it going to happen? Are we going to have that banana skin mentality when we when we play so well away from home and then come here at, back to Ewood Park and then play atrocious? Um, I don't know. I I'm confident that we can we can get three points. I don't know how uh, a good performance will do, but to be honest with you, I just want the three points. We don't have to win by six nil or four nil or three nil or whatever. If we just get a squeaky one nil win, I'm happy. Get the points onto the next one, and then we'll take on Gary Bowie's Blackpool, um, which is another game I'll be previewing next week once that uh, approaches. Obviously, there's a lot of days in between that. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an anxious one. I'm, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. I am nervous. I don't want us to. to I really don't want us to kill the momentum because the momentum is what's going to drive us up that table. Uh, if if Shrewsbury slip up, if Wigan slip up, and there's other guys above us, Charlton, Bradford, you know, look at Fleetwood. They are uh, dropping like flies. Um, so it is starting to get tight in the middle. Um, but dig a little bit deeper just to get up to those top two spots. What about the fans? Well, to be honest with you, I am making these videos pretty fast and pretty uh, quick after the Oxford United game. So the banter is pretty minimal and I'm actually scrambling to find some stuff. And I'm even actually repeating a couple from the, uh, from the, the, from the review of the Oxford game. So I do apologize for that, for the, my lack of uh, new tweets. I am actually on the, on the road. Uh, midweek it is thanksgiving stateside we are heading down the road so i'm going to limit my my options so i had to get this video out pretty quick so but anyway is, there are some tweets and here they are jack baker this is actually a bristol rovers fan responding to bristol rovers themselves who are promoting half season tickets they are not in the best of moods bristol rovers fans they are not accepting uh half price deals on half to half half uh, season tickets uh, anyway, Jack Baker says, just need the team to turn up now and not defend like a Sunday league pub team. And then also, respect the cake, which is at Matty Bin the House, said, uh, be a few in the spoons by half time if we play like this. He's actually responding to that because they're actually teasing the Blackburn Rovers game. Um, they, they think pretty much the game's already going to be already over um, before they've even kicked the ball. So that's, uh, that shows what morale is like. Uh, for the folks in Bristol Rovers. Uh, Dion BRFC also said this, why Rover make new graphics? Should be on a train pitch sorting out defense. Obviously, he's trying to cut down his tweets there. I mean, he's probably not sure of the of the new, uh, it was the 280 character rule, but he's, he's kind of condensing that tweet a little bit. Um, and he's a little bit pissed because they're coming up with all these graphics and uh, the, 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 the football on the pitch for Bristol Rovers has been shambolic. So he's he's not really happy. Bristol Rover. As for Ethan, he says, 140 quid to watch us lose every week. Not sure you sell many of those fellas. Again, another fella with the morale completely drawn out of them. They're having a tough old season, Bristol Rovers. But, you know, they're realistically, they're only a win away from 13th spot. Um, so they should, you know, get just dig down a little bit. Yes, there have been some shady performances. We've also had our shady performances this season. We've now maybe turned a corner and uh, now looking up, then down. As for some other Rovers fans, Stuart Franklin and the one Jack Walker web uh, Facebook page said this, another good win. He was responding to the, the win in Oxford. Another good win tonight. Let's hope we can 
back it up with a home win against Bristol Rovers on Saturday. Phil Gardner said, a cracking win away from home against a team who are no mugs. Again, referencing Oxford. It's imperative we keep the momentum going and beat Bristol Rovers at the weekend. Put an end to the inconsistency and we'll be right up there at the end of the season. Because we have the team to do it. And he goes, up the Rovers with a little bit of power in there. Uh, Northern Rover, once again, I did use this one earlier. I do apologize. Yes, three more points. Brilliant. Now on to Bristol Rovers. Can we make a win? Uh, can we make win again to make this a stupendous week? And then Becky also, I again use this one. I do apologize because there are no tweets. Everyone's either in bed or drunk or whatever. Great to get six points from two away games. Now on to Ewood Saturday. So everyone's pumped about getting at Ewood Saturday. Hopefully the players are pumped to get to Ewood on Saturday. Over the years, a number of players have played for Blackburn Rovers and Bristol Rovers, the two BRFCs in the football world. Uh, here are just a couple of them. Everybody's favourite defender, Elliot Ward, was once a Bristol Rover player, and he's also now a Blackburn Rovers player. And he also now makes the tees since uh, Downing has come in and made that centre-back spot his own. Another fella who played for both was a goal-scoring machine in his heyday when he was playing for Bristol Rovers. That's Jason Roberts. When he came to Blackburn Rovers, he was more of a target man, kind of a role maybe similar to Samuel or like a holding uh, striker. I didn't really didn't really set the world on fire in Rovers uh, jersey, but he was decent. He was a decent player, and uh, obviously he was back in the Premier League days. Um, so there's just a couple of players who have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Bristol Rovers. There are a number of others. I am saving some for the return leg when we go down to Bristol for for the away match. Um, but if you want to jump ahead and 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 see the whole list yourself just head over to my wordpress site it's got the whole list there in all its glory it's got all the other lists as well from all the other games so check that bad boy out if you've got a moment to spare well you've heard what i've had to think about the match and even you've heard what the fans have got to think about the match but what does cast the cat think about this week's match against bristol rovers let's take a look That's a lot, folks. But before I get going, and once again, I want to give a big shout out to the guys at BRF CS Forum. Uh, make sure you head over to the BRFC Forum just to chat with other fellow Rovers fans, talk about the results and maybe the upcoming fixtures, maybe even plan a meetup somewhere. It's a good opportunity to meet and talk with other fellow Rovers fans. So please check that bad boy out. I've got a link in the description just in case you don't know how to Google. Also, before I go, make sure you head over to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. The games are coming thick and fast. Once we digress the Bristol Rovers game, we're on to the next to the Blackpool game. So there's never ending run of fixtures at the moment. And hopefully Rovers can take maximum points from here on in. Let's, uh, let's go on a massive unbeaten run up to that table and climb to those top two spots. I'd love to see us in the top two spots by the end of the year. And it will be a good platform for 2018 where it should be Rovers year, end the season, in the top two, back in the championship. And maybe we'll have a cracking World Cup too. Um, but anyway, that's, an, that's a story for another day. So uh, my closing point, glad to see the strikers on fire against Oxford. I'm glad to see Rovers scoring some goals. Um, but take it back to Ewood Park now and hopefully we can have a bit more of the same. Uh, let's get another three points against Bristol Rovers, the other BRFC in the Football League. Anyway, till next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.